As the Taliban take control again of Afghanistan, we're taking you to an area where its members have often found refuge, just across the border in the tribal areas of Pakistan, a strip of land which for years had been left to fend for itself, governed by customary law, often even stricter than Sharia. It is a situation inherited from the colonial period. As the British controlled all of the Indian peninsula, only the tribal areas kept a certain autonomy. And that stayed even after the partition of India and Pakistan in 1947. In the 1970s, it was the region from where the Mujahideen resistance was organized against the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. And since then, it's remained a haven for jihadist movements like Al-Qaeda, the Islamic State Group and the Taliban. After the attacks of September the 11th, 2001, the US began to put pressure on Pakistan to take real control of the region, Washington pouring in billions of dollars over the years to finance the Pakistani military in the fight against terrorism. In 2009, Barack Obama saying, though, he still believed the tribal areas remained the most dangerous place in the world. The tribal regions are vast, they are rugged, and they are often ungoverned. And that's why we must focus our military assistance on the tools, training, and support that Pakistan needs to root out the terrorists. For the American people, this border region has become the most dangerous place in the world. The Pakistani army has been particularly ruthless and deadly in the tribal zones, forcing half the population to flee, most to displacement camps. In 2018, though, something changed. Pakistan's parliament passed a law ending the exceptional status of the region, a revolution supposed to bring massive investment and development. So how is the plan going? And will the return to power of the Taliban, the other side of the border, destroy any hopes for peace? Well, Selene Shalvon Fioriti and Shahzaib Walla revisit the tribal zones for France 24. An arid and steep land, North Waziristan. One of the seven districts that make up the tribal areas of Pakistan. Until May 2018, the constitution of Pakistan did not apply to this territory, largely governed by tribal laws. Since then, a fusion has taken place, an official merge of the tribal areas to the Pakistani state to pacify this violent region. However, terrorist cells continue to operate on the ground, and for that reason, the military presence is still visible. Ready? Yes, sir. Good, Shabazz. Now, check your equipment. Check your equipment. Bismillah. We do this bomb disposal work all over North Waziristan. We go on foot and scan the roads for IEDs and bombs. Good. Deploy. Check the sound. The sound was coming. Clear. Clear, sir. In 2010 and 2011, it was impossible for us to stand here and talk like this. It was too risky. The people were physically and mentally cut off from the world. That's why criminal activities and narcotics trafficking could flourish. Back then, stolen cars and kidnapping for ransom was common. Now civilians walk and drive here. Trade takes place. It's a testament to the change. A few hundred meters away, trucks carrying goods are crossing from Afghanistan. Recently, we have confiscated ammunition. In some cars, we have also seized hashish and other narcotics. More than 2,000 kilometers of fence built in 2017 separates Afghanistan from Pakistan. According to the Pakistani army, it covers more than 80 percent of the border. A border that was porous in the past, where terrorist groups such as the Taliban, Al-Qaeda or the Islamic State in Khorasan would cross freely. That traffic hasn't disappeared, but it is considerably reduced. 
This is our advanced warning system, and the detection lines run through here. We have a control room, we have sensors every 30 to 40 meters, and when someone approaches the fence, we get an alarm. Previously, there's been an influx of insurgents from Afghanistan, but now it's almost impossible for people to cross the fence. If they try to cross it, we will shoot them, we will follow orders, but we will protect the fence at all costs. After years of lax fighting between the army and terrorist groups, the Pakistani military took a hard stand in 2014 after Pakistani Taliban carried out a massacre in a school run by the army. A hard-hitting military operation was launched in Waziristan and also a huge communications campaign. Over the years, the military has collected items from jihadist caches and turned them into a museum. Colonel Cameron gives us a guided tour. This is basically a reenactment of the terrorist markers, which there were 300 of different sizes in this uh, North Waziristan. In this terrorist markers, we are keeping all those equipment which we have captured from those terrorists. This car is a Humvee, American-made, and this was being used by Afghan Taliban. The American army captured it, and we again captured them from the Taliban. This is uh, the suicidal preparation room. In this room, they have given a concept of the ladke ko jisko suicidal ke liye leke jana hota tha usko wo log lekar aate the is kamre mein rakhte the aur usko dikhaya jata tha ki ye jannat dekho is tarah khoobsurat hogi is tarah sharab ki nehre beh rahi hongi suicidal attack ke baad jab aap jaagoge jannat mein aankh khulegi to ye khoobsurat aurat aapko jo hai na baaye khol ke khadi hogi aur aapko receive karegi on the wall poems and posters of bollywood stars under these carpets tunnels doors were made once the aerial bombardment was done by the security forces. They just go inside these tunnels. Bed hai jahan pe patient ko laya jata tha aur yeh iske stretcher hai, yahan pe mukhtalif medicines padi hui hai, bandages padi hui hai. Yahan pe prisoner room. Yeh mukhtalif ozar inho ne rakhe hui hai. Prisoner ko chain karne ke liye, iske pair bandne ke liye, haath bandne ke liye. Zyada tar joh maare security forces ke कोई प्रिजनर पकड़ लिया जाता था लोकल मलक्स को जो कि प्रो गवर्नमेंट थे उनको ला के बांधा जाता था और यहाँ पे उनको जबा किया जाता था यहाँ पे उनका खून यहाँ पे जाता था अंदर 2004 में जब मैं पहली बार इधर आया था वो कैप्टन और उस वक्त हालात ऐसे थे कि एक अजीब सा समाज था यहाँ पे फायर हो रहा है रास्ते में आईडीस पड़ रही हैं कॉन्वाइस पे अगर कोई पाकिस्तानी का झंडा लगाता था तो उस बंदे का सर काट देते थे। While the violence has since decreased significantly, militant groups still carry out deadly attacks. Last February, four female social workers were shot dead in North Waziristan. Peshawar, one of the major cities of Pakistan, lies at the gateway to the tribal areas. Security has been improved here as well. Over the years, access to education and more urban lifestyle is sprawling. Nahid Afridi, originally from the tribal areas, has moved here. I live in my sister's house in the tribal belt. It's not easy to be accepted as a single woman. As a member of a left-wing political party, she plans to run in the upcoming election for the local government. Today, Nahid is going to the tribal district of Bara for a political meeting. Here, fear is rising after the Taliban took control in neighboring Afghanistan. Also, people feel that the Pakistani state does not keep its promises. I'm very concerned about the situation in Afghanistan. We're already severely burdened. We're already living very badly ourselves. Our houses are still destroyed by the war. How will we be able to absorb the influx of Afghan refugees? It will create a lot of problems. When our new system is already very fragile, what can we suggest? This is what we've been pleading with the provincial government. They're struggling to take care of us. How could they be able to facilitate the arrival of refugees? They know they don't have the capacity to do it. Even the promises of financial compensation after the merger haven't been fully fulfilled. 
It's very true. When the tribal areas were merged with the neighboring province under a new constitutional amendment, it was promised that 100 billion rupees would be given every year for the next 10 years. But now it's been three years that we've been getting less. Usually only men sit in this kind of assembly because it's a decision-making space. I was the first woman to take part in these meetings. And when pictures of it started to circulate, many people said that this was a result of the merger, that if a woman defied our tribal organization, she should be killed. People started to criticize my party. They asked how I could take part in an assembly, a rally, or even an election campaign. They asked the comrades, why didn't you find a man instead? One of Nahid Afridi's goals is to improve living conditions for women in tribal areas. She takes us on a visit to the only all-female police station. It is one of the few new government structures that have been established since the merger. I wish such women's police stations could be established in other merged tribal districts, because women can't go into the men's police stations. Our tribal women aren't very confident, and if they're provided with such a service, they will take courage and take their problems to the women's stations. What kind of cases do you usually have here? Mostly we have cases related to problems at home, land disputes, domestic violence. My husband hit me. Did he beat you recently? Yes, last night. He's always drunk. Sometimes at night, he throws us out of the house. My children are also very upset because of him. Even the neighbors are tired of him. So I came here to ask for your help. I want him to be arrested because he has made our lives miserable. Misogynist culture dominates in the tribal areas. The people, mostly ethnic Pashtuns, uphold values of honor. In the market of Dera, arms dealing is a custom that is passed on from father to son. Neither the dealer nor the buyer need a permission to carry weapons. This old model was almost perfect. Before, people kept their guns carefully, protected them like this. There was passion and an attachment to your weapon. The arms market is unregulated except for very large caliber weapons. Here the government's plan of normalization of the tribal areas is far from accomplished and not really popular. The merger hasn't benefited us at all. It hasn't given us anything. It's taken away a lot of things. We had a very beautiful culture and a centuries-old tribal system. In Dera, a Kalashnikov is cheaper than a smartphone. I like the Kalashnikov because it's a reliable weapon. It can be easily made here and it shoots very smoothly. In the past, there was a big demand in Afghanistan for this weapon. And when asked if he still exports weapon to Afghanistan, Jan Mohammed cuts short the interview. Don't ask me anything about Afghanistan. I don't know anything. Don't get me involved in this. It's a very tricky subject here. Shoot a few rounds, make sure everything's good. Islamabad is suspected of playing a double game with what is commonly referred to in Pakistan as the good and the bad Taliban. Although the army is fighting the Pakistani Taliban on its own soil, its intelligence services are suspected of supporting the Afghan Taliban on the other side of the border. We meet Nahida Fridi on her way to a girls' school in the tribal city of Bada. an area previously under control of the Pakistani Taliban. Salam, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Well, this school was destroyed by the insurgents. Yes, it was completely destroyed. It started when the Taliban told us that we should not come to school wearing a veil, but with a complete burqa. They told us that we had to bring male relatives to escort us. We told them it wasn't possible. 
In 2008, the situation got worse. The Taliban threatened many schools like ours, then they completely destroyed them. Only 8% of women in the tribal areas are literate. Nahid wants to educate girls in her homeland about political participation. Hello children, how are you? How many of you girls will become Pashtun politicians? Wow, so many leaders! It's complicated for you because it's very difficult for women to join politics in this region. It's always difficult at the beginning. The first time a girl came out of her house to go to school, everyone was saying bad things about her. People said she was going against the culture. But finally, when she started going to school, she pulled the other girls towards her. Everyone was bad-mouthing the first female doctor. But now all the girls want to be doctors. People always say bad things about people who do something for the first time. But then society accepts the change. And in the end, the barriers will get lower for girls like you. But there are still many obstacles to normalization in the region. Between the terrorist attacks, the double game of the Pakistani army and its intelligence services, and a government that does not honor its promises of development, a mutual mistrust still exists in the tribal areas of Pakistan. Salen Chalvon Fioretti and Shahzeb Wala revisiting the tribal zones for France 24. Well, that's all from this week's edition and all the previous editions as well, of course. Thanks for watching. More news coming up shortly.